people now. Well, we're going, we don't need roads. One of the great things about seeing you in a show like this is, is watching you have the chance to really flesh out and get to know a character, not just within the confines of two hours, but over the course of multiple episodes and, and hopefully multiple seasons. I haven't seen this whole season yet, but I'm just sort of curious, thinking about all your great cinematic characters you've played, which one do you wish that you could have had multiple episodes or multiple seasons to be able to like dive into a little bit further? Um, that's a good question. Um, let me try to be, give, a, give you a thoughtful answer. Um, it usually has to do when the world that you're in is so kind of great or interesting or dark or whatever it is that you you think now that you've sort of got it going you'd love to keep doing more of it so i mean i do remember um making a stephen king film 1408 Dude, 1408 is a ma that, that's one of the best stephen king adaptations ever you know, or like a uh one called identity which was a thriller that was oh. I just watched that with my girl. I, one, that's, I, I know I'm geeking out on you, but I love that movie so oh, yeah. much. Well, so those things, like once you're in them, you know, you realize you could keep going. So, I mean, and then, I, but I think it's just probably really appreciating what a great writer Stephen King is. And when you're inhabiting one of his pieces mm -hmm. and you're able to do it right in a way, you think, God, this is so great. You know, you could, you could see how this guy might not be out of the room yet. You know, you can start another movie and do it. Yeah. So I had, I'd have those thoughts about certain projects. Uh, but, um, but this was really, really great to be able to do something over nine, nine hours or whatever it is, 10 hours. It was For sure. I, obviously, this is not the first time that, that you filmed in Chicago. Obviously, you've, you've, you have filmed here many, many times. And I'm sort of curious how, obviously, you love the city, the city loves you. But, but how does filming in Chicago, working in Chicago, differ than all the other cities around the world that you've worked in before? Um, gosh, you know, there, there's just, there's great crews and great people here who've done stuff and I've known for years and there's a lot of, you know, great professional people here and it's just a great city to shoot in. Um, and uh, I've done it, done it before, but I think just uh, being able to be in Chicago and, you know, ride a bicycle or a motorcycle to the set and, um, you know, be in your hometown, it's it's great. And um, I think, as Gillian was saying too, there's so many parts of Chicago that are haven't been, you know, overshot shot out. In in a way, it's still a even after all these years, there's so many parts of it that are unfilmed. You know, that are terrific locations and areas. And they got a you know a great studio now um, that's closer to the city. Yeah, it's rocking their own. So, um, and they got all the shows they're doing. So, it's a, yeah, it's Cinespaces, great. It's, it's killer. You know, filming in Chicago, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the 20th anniversary of one of my all-time favorite films, which is High Fidelity. And uh, you know, I, I feel like that's such a great love letter to so many different. One, a love letter to an era of music, a love letter to the city, and also a love letter to something that my my buddies and I do, which is like, dude, okay, top five horror movies of all time, go. Like, like we just, it's just the thing that we always do. I'm sort of curious, like, 20 years later, what that movie means to you. I thought uh, when I, like when Gillian was doing this, she said, well, I don't want to redo um, Utopia and not add anything new to it because it was a really great show, right? So she added this whole other element to it that had my character in this Christy Labs and Michael Stern playing by Rain Wilson. Um, so that made it new for her. And when I read the book, High Fidelity, I thought, well, I don't want to just um, put it in, set it in Chicago just because I can. But I thought I knew those guys, even though the guys in London were obsessed with R&B and souls and like the Muscle Shoal sound and you know, Solomon Burke. And when we and we were growing up, we, we were all interested in the British New Wave stuff and the new David Bowie records and punk and, you know, the jam and all that stuff. But beyond that, it was the same guys and it was the same culture. So I sort of knew that it did translate to Chicago. And so we, you know, I, we were able to make it sort of a, a love letter to Chicago and um, and to people who love art and music and snobs and all that. Uh, and uh, I like that people keep um, kind of grappling with the movie, you know, because I think a lot of times ambiguity is something that gets lost these days. And, you know, people say, well, hey, well, maybe this character wasn't so sympathetic or he was more of an asshole or, or, or any of these things. And you're like, yeah, of course, all of that, you know, flaws and all. You want to you want to create kind of something true, and then 
yeah, people can keep sort of having different reactions to it over time. That's kind of cool. But um, I mean, that's, that's the reason we're still talking about it. Yeah. But I do love, I, I think, you know, my, uh, the book's love of music and my love of music, I think was re well represented. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I wish the world was, uh, run by people who listen to more good music because I think we probably have a much less brutal world. So I, I know everyone's probably going to ask you about this and I hate to ask a question that everyone else is asking, but I got to say this, this is a show that was conceived pretty close to a decade ago. And it is about a piece of pop culture that predicts a major pandemic that's going to happen. So I'm curious, how has the last six months of just what's happened in this world changed this show for you? Uh, it's been really, really surreal, actually, um, to to be living in the world that we're living in now. Because when we were filming, obviously, we had no idea <laughs> that this show would be so timely. Um, and then as COVID started to get worse, it sort of slowly sunk in, I think, for all of us that we had just shot something that was now so relevant. Um, although the pandemic storyline is only one element of the show, but it's just because we're living in a pandemic pandemic currently it just feels very timely super timely well it's also very timely for me because i live in chicago so you guys are walking by places where i'm like that's like three blocks that. away from my apartment it's so cool i'm just curious <laughs> what was your experience like shooting in our city it's my city too so it was great yes yes <laughs> i was born there it's oh, our city gotta... my dog's very excited about it it's it's so so was it cool was it cool like it was just like oh. being home it was I got to see my family. They had a great time. They made some set visits. I got to go around all my old haunts. Uh, yeah. It was really fun. It was really fun also exploring areas of the city that I'd never seen before because I grew up on the south side. Uh, so I didn't really spend much time on the west side and we did a lot of filming on the west side. Um, so it was kind of a bit of a displacement being like, this is my city, but also I don't recognize elements of this in the same way that the graphic novel is like Becky's blood she knows that graphic novel but then she's thrust into it in real life and it's like oh but i don't know this aspect of it for sure you know whenever i start and i become obsessed with a new show one of my first thoughts is like okay like where are we going like how like how like well what is the end game going to be how many how many seasons am i going to of my life am i going to commit to the show <laughs> and am i am i going to be happy with the ending so i'm curious <laughs> obviously i know it's based on a previous series but it's taken some different directions it's kind of you know forming its own thing Whenever you guys are a part of a show like this, do you ever pull Gillian or someone aside and, and just say like, okay, be honest, like, like what happens? Like, what, what's the ending? What's like, do I make it all the way through? Like what happens? Dan does all the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I ever asked her point blank. Um, I think I was too nervous to rub her the wrong way because, you know, all it takes is one, you know, swift pen movement and Ian is no longer part of the Utopia universe. So mm -hmm. I was trying to be very, care be very careful not to overstep and to mind my P's and Q's, but um, mm -hmm. I know she's got it all charted out in her mind for at least three seasons. So if we're lucky enough to go the distance like that, I think you'll be in good hands. I, I'm, I'm you, however long you guys want to go, I'm with you hundred percent. And as we wrap up so much of this show is about people chasing down a very collectible item. Um, I'm a big nerd. I have a lot of like movie memorabilia, pop culture stuff around my apartment. So I'm curious, what is like the most collectible cool item you guys at home that, they, that, that have at home so that whenever someone walks in, they're like, Oh my God, what is that? I don't have one. I'm <laughs> not with that attitude. <laughs> I don't have one yet, but I will circle back for season two yes I promise you i'll have one and we will discuss it deal i'm in i'm in dan <laughs> you're talking about just like a collectible item from any background yeah any yeah something something that's cool to you and, and and a conversation started when people walk in um yeah we have instruments that i basically don't play at all but uh <laughs> but those are definitely uh cool to me i love looking at them and not playing them and uh, they're good conversation starters about how I don't play them when people come in and see them all laid out. They're like, oh, you must be very musical. And I'm like, actually. <laughs> you think it. Now, when I watch season two and your character all of a sudden is like playing the flute, I'm going to be like, oh, <laughs> Gillian saw that interview and now she made him learn how to play all these instruments. Uh, guys, seriously, I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Sorry the dog was barking the whole time. Um, and, and, the whole, and the whole like quarantine pandemic, that's the first time she's barked in an interview. So um, she's excited. She just, She's yeah. very excited. She's been watching the show with me. So seriously, guys, <laughs> congratulations on this. I love the show so much. And hopefully next time when we talk for season two, it'll be in person. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully. Right. Bye, guys. Um, you have so many incredible scenes that 
obviously end up requiring a certain level of violence and then there's blood spurted all over the place. And I'm just sort of curious, are you the sort of person that whenever you, if you have blood on you, you're like, oh my God, I got blood all over me. Or are you the sort of person that says like, oh yes, I got blood all over me. This is awesome. Like, I guess the best way to put it is like the moment where I just get to let it squirt out. I was like, yes, yes, yes. my moment. <laughs> like just, I get to go great. I, dude, it's, it's so satisfying and such a, it's probably not good to say, but it was very satisfying. Um, yeah. You know, so much, so much throughout the show, your character is two, three, four steps ahead of everyone else. Your character just knows more information, knows what's going on more so than everyone else. By nature of that, do they tell you things that they don't tell the other actors just so you have context? So you're aware of sort of the things that you're talking about, or are you discovering it as you turn the page as well? It's, I think we're all discovering it at the same time. Um, I guess maybe if anything, I was like, oh, okay. They didn't read that far yet or something. I'm a quick reader, so I, I think I've yeah. got it. But um, I think even in the show, it's in, as I read it, it's I'm discovering as they're discovering. I think it's just like instinct in the terms of, I'm always, I'm a very paranoid person in real life. And I'm always, you know, questioning I'm always looking around I'm always that so kind of stepping into that character and looking at Jess the way I'm looking at her or any of those things it's kind of like that's more of a natural thing I can start to kind of dial down of how Jessica would react to this situation and so I think it like we're real we're real close basically um and well I would be remiss if I didn't talk to you about the fact I'm obviously I'm here in Chicago it was great for me a guy that's working from home to be able to like see my city again because I can't really get out and see anything and it, it's it's so great you guys shoot it so beautifully and it's so great how the city's a character in the show what was your experience like in our city I loved it I ended up um moving there I stayed there for a good I just moved back out um I thought it was so magical in a way I've never I've never been to Chicago. We got to see so many different parts. I think like downtown, just everything going on is like, that's Hollywood to me, but like, you know, in a raw, real thing. And then you have like going out to where there's nothing but land and just kind of seeing the houses. It's like, it's like a more comforting New York to me, you know? And there's like this cool, but there's also this like element of familiarity with like Texas, you know, and the people, the vibe and- I think we're, we're both born in Houston. Yes, yes. Yeah, you yeah. get, you know, there's something- I got you, yeah. I can get down with you. I get this, I get this. So yeah, yeah I think it I think it was really cool being able to shoot everywhere, you know, and really learn it all, so. Well, you guys did an amazing job and uh, hopefully whenever you guys come, for th come through for season two, let me know. You're welcome to come over and hang out and uh, yeah. I got a very comfortable fold out couch. I'll save Amazon some money and you guys are welcome <laughs> to it. And hopefully the next time we talk for season two, keep me on your list because I'd love to talk to you in person. Appreciate that, thank you. Seriously, congratulations, it's amazing. Thank you so much. The, the question I want to lead off with, and I know everyone's asking a different variation of it, but this is a, a, an idea that was conceived close to a decade ago. It's about a piece of pop culture that predicted a pandemic that spreads around everywhere. Like, how has the last six months of what's happened in this world changed the experience of filming this show for you? Well, I don't know if it changed the experience of filming the show. We finished it at the end of last September, mm -hmm. so months before any COVID cases, you know, came to light. Um, um, I, you know, I, I, I will say overall, I, I, I think we're all pretty much on the same page that uh, you know, we're, we're in a terrifying, isolating, sad and frustrating sort of time as a global society. And while, you know, this show mirrors a viral pandemic, no two viral pandemics are exactly the same. And what we're really dealing with right now is a global mental health crisis and um, hopefully the brilliantly beautiful world that Gillian has crafted, um, the viewers will just take a hold of what we got going on and see themselves in some of these characters and give themselves the opportunity and the ability to process some of the things that we haven't been able to kind of work through yet because we're just closed off into our little bubbles right now. You know, I've got to say, speaking of being closed off in a bubble, it, it was so great for me to watch this show because it allowed me to get out. And I, obviously, I, I live here in Chicago. It allowed me to, like, walk around Chicago in a way. I'm like, oh, like the Harold Washington Library. I haven't seen you in, like, six yeah. months. It was nice to actually get out. I was curious, what was your experience like shooting in our city? Oh, it was – I mean, Desmond's from Chicago originally. Yes. Incredible yeah. Incredible because not only did I have Desmond and Ashley who are locals, but – it's just such a warm, welcoming, amazing food city. And so not only that, but 
it was kind of a dream job because I had incredible city, incredible castmates, such a, a passionate and thrilling character to step into the shoes of. And one of the most riveting and kind of twist and turn roller coaster scripts that I've ever read. And so it really was a dream. You know, this is, I, I just sort of came up with this question. I hope this isn't a stupid question, but what I love about this show is it like, you can sort of look at different things in the frame and there, I feel like there are clues about what's going on, especially obviously within dystopia and utopia. So like, are the images on the wallpaper behind you guys, like, are there any secrets in those or am I just like looking way too, I know, I know it's like a digital wallpaper, but oh, are there, is, no, is there, is there something to that? There, there, there totally is. I don't think we could tell you exactly what they are because not with that attitude, them, you can't. <laughs> no, but most of them are through the, the the brilliant mind of Gillian Flint, just dropping you know little eggs here and there, and through Zhao Ruiz's um, a beautiful artwork that uh, he, he's the one who created the illustrations for Utopia. So both of them have teamed up, and uh, you know I don't think we've even found all of the clues within Utopia after shooting in the very first season. I think there will be more clues and little nuggets that we find if we're able to, you know, continue and move forward. It is the kind of show that I think audiences will be able to watch again and again and again and again as hopefully seasons two, three, four, five come back because I think we are dropping hints in, in episode one, season one that will resonate in a different way after you've watched the first season. So I think it's one of those ones you can binge and I think you can watch it three, four, five, six times. Well, I am that annoying guy to my friends and family because like I'll text everyone because everyone's looking for something to watch. I'm like, guys, like, I found the next sure. great show. It's amazing. They're like, where is it? I have to watch. I'm like, oh, you can't watch it for a couple of like, you're like, you can't watch for like two weeks. So, but, so I am like really annoying to everyone, but I've been telling everyone it's fantastic. And seriously, guys, congratulations. I love it. And Jessica, the, the Happy Death Day films are masterpieces. And I really hope we get a third one. Me too. So, Rain, good to see you again, man. How are you? Hi, Jake. Nice to see you. Um, so, you know, I love this idea of, of a comic book that obviously has uh, very big hints about big events that are coming. And, and, you know, pop culture has a really weird way, I think, of, of finding ways to predict different things that are going to happen, whether they are, you know, it's The Simpsons or even technological things. You look at that Minority Reporter, even back to 2001. I'm curious, what do you think in the history of pop culture was the biggest predictor of things to come? Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I've, I've got to say it's utopia. I mean, uh, uh, I'm just going to go right there. I mean, come on. We were making a, a, a fictional pandemic. Who would have thought like four or five months later that an actual pandemic would happen? And so many of the themes that we're exploring in the show are happening in the real world, like the preponderance of conspiracies. Do you, has, has the last six months changed this show for you i mean obviously you guys did all of this and i mean the show was even like like it was a, there was a british version before this one and now everything's happening like as the events unfurled did you sort of like look back at your script and just go what like what the hell is going on yeah i i don't know how this happened it is absolutely unreal i mean it is like the simpsons predicting donald trump being president um you uh I, I don't know what to think. I think maybe Gillian Flynn is onto something, or maybe this whole thing was cooked up by Jeff Bezos, you know, to get more eyeballs on Utopia. Um, obviously, you know, the movie, the, the series revolves around so many people chasing after this comic book, a very collectible item to say the least. But I'm curious, in your home, what is like the coolest collectible item that you have that when people come over, they're like, oh my God, what is that? Boy, uh, I don't know. I um, Behind, there's a there's kind of a green screen back here, but... Uh, behind it is the uh, the original sign-in sheet for the first day of auditions for The Office from 15 years ago. Wow, that's, that's actually really cool. And it was is the entire original cast like signed in? No, on, it? Um, on the first day of auditions, it was me and Jenna Fisher mm -hmm. um, and a bunch of other people that didn't get cast. Um, but it's a uh, it's it's an amazing keepsake. What what made you grab that? Uh, I didn't grab it. Uh, the casting director kept it. And then as a gift, she gave it to me. Now, I, I know that uh, obviously you have a history of, of working in Chicago before because you worked on stage here. You and I got to speak whenever you were on stage here in Chicago. I'm just sort of curious how th the experience of working in our city differs from different places where you've gotten to work around the world. So listen, I, I'm so glad you asked me this question because it's really important for the people of Chicago to understand that the talent level in Chicago is off the charts. 
the 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 theater, the quality of theater, the level of, of professionalism of theater, no matter what it is, if it's you know improvisation or Steppenwolf or the Goodman, is um, is is absolutely incredible. The training that actors received in Chicago is unbelievable as well. There is a rich, deep tradition of like vital theater and TV and film being shot in Chicago. And I'm so glad we shot Utopia in Chicago because the actors were so great. You know, a lot of cities you shoot in, Vancouver, you <laughs> you know, the actors that you play for the day players or the minor characters are, are terrible. But every person we cast in Chicago was amazing. Even if they just had two lines or if they were there for two episodes, uh, it's an incredible talent pool in that city. I love that you say that. And I love that you guys didn't just shoot here. Like the city is a character in the show, like how you guys use the Harold Washington Library. Like, like it's like the city is, is as much a living, breathing character as everyone else. And, and seriously, I, I really hope I'm four episodes in. It's my new obsession. And uh, and I promise you, I, I do these things every day. And if I don't like something, I just don't say anything about it. But I genuinely <laughs> love this show. So, uh, man, please keep me on your list. And hopefully we're going to be talking in person for season two, man. Really, it's, it's a pleasure to see you again, dude. I love it. Thanks, Jake. Gillian, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Doing very well. Good to see you again. Uh, one of the things I, I always love when you do is uh, whenever you set stories in Chicago. Obviously, I'm biased because I'm talking to you from Chicago, but you don't just set stories here. You make the city just as much character in your stories as the actual humans that are running around. I loved how you used the Harold Washington Library. I mean, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. I, I want to I talk about the difference for you between not just setting a story here in Chicago because it's a great city and it would look cool on camera, but actually utilizing the city and yeah. making it a character in your story. Sure. I mean, to me, you know, the first time I got to film in Chicago was with Widows, with Steve McQueen. Which is a masterpiece, by the way. Oh, it's such a just dirty Valentine to Chicago. Yes. It makes yeah. me so happy watching it. And he he fell in love with Chicago. I mean, he really wanted to film it specifically in Chicago because it's so cinematic. And, you know, I felt the same way. I mean, to me, the whole point of filming in Chicago is it's a city, you know, it's, it's, and it's its own city. It doesn't look like anywhere else. I, there's, I don't think I have a bigger pet peeve than when you're watching a show or a movie and it shows the Chicago skyline and then it goes down and you're like, that's Toronto or that's, you know, that's not Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. Why is there a Tim Hortons there? <laughs> right, right. I'm on to you movie. Um, so I, I really liked, and I like the idea that in a, in a show that's about all the things that are hidden behind, you know, the truth and are, are layered upon, you know, because Chicago to me is, is such a city of layers, you know, it's there's the L and there's the tall buildings and there's the river and there's just, there's so many different complication and textures to it that I just thought it'd be, it, it's a perfect place to, to set it. You know, whenever I, I speak to someone that in some way has a, a Chicago connection, they they tend to attribute the city more so than I talk to people that, that developed skills in other cities. Obviously, I know you got your master's at Northwestern. I'm just sort of curious in what way this city sort of affected the writer that you would go on to become. I mean, in, in, in many different ways. I mean, to begin with, I always wanted to be a writer and I'm from Kansas City originally. And Chicago was the first big city that I ever visited with. And I remember, you know, driving up with my folks when I was eight or nine and just seeing the city come out of the prairie and, and the height of it and the immenseness of it that I was, you know, very much not used to and thinking like, well, when I grow up, like, this is the place for me. And I, you know, I fell in love with it way back when. And so it really captured my imagination from that time period. You know, everything, it's a beautiful city, the architecture, it's, it, like I said, it's, I appreciate places, people, things that are unique unto themselves. And to me, that's really Chicago. And I think it's also been really nurturing for me as a writer. It's the writing community. You know, I lived, I've lived in New York. I've lived in LA for work and, you know, had good times in both those cities. But to me, Chicago was the one that really embraced me in that great Midwestern way of like, you know, that they you don't cross your arms, like prove it to me. It's more like, hey, what do you got? Which yeah, I really sure. appreciate. For sure. And as we wrap up, I know obviously this is an adaptation of, of, of a series that came out and originated uh, across the pond years ago, but I love that you are making it your own. And in that sense, obviously you're, you're sort of taking different directions. So in that sense, as I'm four episodes into the show, already can honestly tell you that I'm obsessed with it. I wouldn't tell you that if I didn't believe it. Um, uh, but I guess the question I want to know is like, 
do you know the ending now? Because this is a show that could go on multiple seasons. So do you, do you have a direction in mind that we're going to? I would love to sound incredibly smart and say, of course, I have it all figured out, all 10 seasons, but um, but um, no, but I would love to, con- to continue with it. And it's definitely, I've, I've got so many ideas in my head. So it's a world that I would really love to stay in. Well, the and stay in Chicago. Are, are, <laughs> yes, please. And the episodes are, are beautifully written. And I got to say, you end them so well, because I'll, I'll say like, okay, I have other stuff to do today. I'm going to watch one episode. And then one, and I'm just like, Gillian, damn it. Like, what do you stop? <laughs> So seriously, congratulations. for Thank you for my new obsession. And I, I please put me on your list to talk to you for season two because I genuinely love the show. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate right. it. Take care. Have a wonderful day. You too. Well, we're going, we don't need roads.